This is Ramsey Sound, the race. We kind of got here at slightly the wrong time. We're doing four knots through the water and 11 knots over the ground. Right, we'll get ready to make the turn. Right, five off. Yeah, well there's a rock there. Can you see that eddy? Yeah, sit. Yeah, I know there's eddies all over the place. That's it. Uh, it's an ambition I've always had to do it. Um, never had the time. Obviously, with normal work routines, you don't don't get the time to spend a long time on something like that. And um, finally, retired. Time's there. The inclination was there. I was going to do it. We started from Folkestone Harbour in Kent. We went west, round Cornwall, up the west side of England to Wales. Got stuck there for a good period of time with weather and finally had to go across to Ireland to get north. I don't know if anybody can hear this commentary but I think it's safe to say this is bloody horrible. <laughs> it's uh, supposedly a false five, occasional six. It's been more like a six, just nothing but a six. Um, even the dolphins have deserted us now. And then from Ireland back across to Scotland and then through the Caledonian and the Grinnan Canals because we're running out of time but I've always wanted to sail through Loch Ness that's another part of the journey I wanted to do and come out of Inverness and then again we we had so much bad weather that year it was unbelievable but um, we finally got it done and then we had to run long legs down the east coast to get back in time for the end of the year before the season closed and we got stuck somewhere for the winter. That uh, all happened and we made it. In total it took a period of 152 days. We actually sailed 53 days in that time. So it took basically five months, two months sailing. That was all down to weather. Everywhere, we, I was showing Bob earlier, the um, show my friend the log log book and I'd forgotten but we got from here to the Isle of Wight and we had 10 days in the Isle of Wight with the gales that was the start of it and everywhere we went we had three weeks in Penzance it just didn't happen easily you know but um, that's sailing that's England that's our weather deal with it. Okay. 1664. Would you do it again? Love to but I'll do it slower I'll do it possibly over two years uh, because of the because of all the hold-ups with the weather we didn't have time to look at lots of places that you'd like to go and see we had to do more or less delivery legs rather than sort of holiday time jog along the coast popping in every port sort of uh, routines and that was that was the only that was one of the downsides for it you know that's still lovely that's difficult because everywhere is new, wonderful, exciting, possibly going across to Ireland or across the Bristol Channel because they were two of the longest legs and the achievement of doing that crossing the Irish Sea is another ambition I've had for years you know because my family, my wife's family are from Ireland and um, I've always thought I'd like to sail there and surprise them by turning up with a boat you know? 
but uh, everywhere, everywhere is memorable. Loch Ness was a disappointment. We left into the lock and I was determined I wanted to sail up Loch Ness. That was one of my ambitions. But uh, the wind had other ideas. We, I did three hours and we did two miles, tacking across, with backwards across, back and forth across, and it just wasn't happening. So in the end we had to give in and put the engine on, you know, for the, for the rest of that trip up through. But even so, it's um, it's all a mystery that, that that carries that lock, you know. And I will bore you later with me purring, but about the monster. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just a, just a, another achievement. It's just one thing I've always fancied being able to do. Going back to highlights, the Crinan Canal was absolutely stunning. It is such a delightful trip through there. It's it's just in wild nature in a little little river, it's no no bigger than this. And um, also the Caledonian, you know, and the people we met along the way, really, really helpful, friendly. And I think we we surrendered a day at Loch Lagan, big barge there, which is called Eagle Barge. And it's the first time north of sort of Watford that we found real ale, all the rest is lager. Another memorable spot was get, getting into the beginning of the Caledonian, on the Neptune staircase, there's seven seven locks to get through there. There's old boys there that are no longer working that just help you through, take your tender lines, lead you from one section to the next, and you give them a couple of bob for that that sort of assistance. Outstanding, couldn't fault it. Apart from what we broke, nothing fell apart, nothing broke. I don't think we went aground too many times. We touched the bottom, I think, creeping into St Ives. Never had a, oh well, I'm so pleased with the boat. It's sound, it's solid, and it's safe. We got a knockdown crossing Humber Estuary with a gust of wind that came like a black wall across the estuary and hit us, you know, before we could do anything. And I, w I was actually down below putting the kettle on and um, the boat went over so far, I was like Garfield on the windows on this side. It went right down. But then she popped up again, just headed up into wind like they do. They're taught that way in the, in the factory, I think, when they build them. And um, everything was fine. We just reefed in and then carried on. Yeah, solid, good, good solid boat. Good for little family boat, I think, for a small family. Safe, single-hander, everything. We had a horrible trip when we first started out from Folkestone. We were going west and the wind wasn't going to let us, so we actually went to Boulogne. Spent a couple of days in Boulogne, then came back across to Folkestone two days later. We had a wave fill the cockpit up to knee level on the way back across, and then we kicked off a couple of days after that for the trip proper. And yeah, that was probably, that was unexpected, more than terrifying, you know, just, it was choppy and like English Channel weather, and one hit the side, at the wrong time and went up and over the top of us and <laughs> right up yeah but again she just shudders and water goes away and you carry on the next adventure might be if we go up uh, northern to copenhagen on mine might be mine for the next ad adventure if we have one together see the northern lights we've talked about that haven't we you know haven't we? Except they, like the blackpool lights yeah i like yeah, them see them so this is a little thing I wrote after I'd sailed round Britain. I'm going to sail round Britain. Well, that's a sort of plan. But anyway, I'll get somewhere whenever I can. Four weeks to Falmouth. That's not very good. I've been sailing near to Hendwinds and I've done the best I could. With the wind on the nose, you know how it goes. Gentlemen never did that in their blazers and smart straw hats. In Penzance Port now, I had a visit from a friend. He's going to help me sail the boat around Land's End. When we got to Padstow and he's eaten the, the pasty he's been craving, I'll sail across the Bristol Channel and melt, make for Milford Haven. Up the coast past Wales, let's hope there's no more gales. Across Morecambe Bay and Liverpool, where the Beatles used to play. Then up to the land of the Tam O'Shanters, that's what the Scots called bonnets, made to the colour of the heathers and a wee cockade thistle on it. Then the Caledonian Canal and into Loch Ness with its wild mysterious creatures is it true they really exist? If I catch one, or even see one, and report it to the press, the lot would be full of hunting types, up to their hunting capers. Perhaps I might just feed it and have it for a friend, to follow me right through the lock up to the very end. Then out to see Inverness, 
into the Murray Firth, then round Ratway Head and Peter Head and finally heading south. Scotland's gone with all its glory, the east coast now, that's a different story. Mountains gone, lowland soon, stormwashed cliffs and sandy dunes. I'm nearly on the home run now, no more haggis and neeps. I'm in England, so there's a, no surprise, there's a curry shop on the corner of every street. Getting closer to Dover, my trip nearly over. I've sailed all the way round, on the home run now, and back to Folkestone Town.